Well hey everyone and welcome back. In this video we'll be discussing strike and dip, specifically defining them, and then looking at some examples to see um, exactly what they look like on different diagrams. So we'll start with dip. And what dip basically is, it is it's the slope of the of really any surface, but in geology we use it for uh, usually bedding planes and strata. or sometimes contact boundaries such as faults. So that's the key word there, slope. And there are two components to dip, um, but they usually aren't represented as a vector. We usually discuss them separately. You can put them together, however, and those are angle, and direction. So the angle should make plenty of sense and the direction is pretty simple afterwards. Let's just say we've got a, um, a three-dimensional diagram here. And we'll say that this is the surface, and this is a dipping um, piece of strata that has uh, poked above the surface here. Now, the angle of dip, you may look at this and say, well, there's quite a few angles to observe here. Well, the angle of dip is always, um, is always made with the horizontal. So if we look here, well, this, this appears to be the surface right here. This goes off at a slightly different angle. Well, if it's made with the, the surface, then we know that this must be our angle of dip. We'll just call that alpha for now. So that's our angle of dip. And how do you tell the direction of dip? Well, it's really simple. You just uh, just look at the, the um, surface you're working on, and depending on which way it's dipping, uh, then you just draw it straight down, going towards the surface and it should be perpendicular to this piece up here. So depending on which direction this is uh, pointing, you know, um, if we had a little compass here, maybe maybe here's uh, north down here, south, and then north, and west. Right, so then we, we would say that this is dipping to the north. Simple enough, right? So whatever angle this is, uh, so I'll just write this out properly. So whatever angle this is, right? So let's just say it's uh, looks looks to be about maybe 40 degrees, 40 degrees to the north. Simple enough. And you know, if it were if it were maybe dipping in this direction, we could say to the northeast, to the northwest, to the south, that we're going in the entirely different direction. But that's the basic dip notation, and that's most of what there is to it. Now it can get a little tricky um, looking at dip, so I'll give you another example that's less straightforward. For the sake of using uh, different media here, we'll move to a two-dimensional cross-sectional diagram. And let's just say we've got a really disgusting uh, surface here. It just kind of does something like that. And then maybe we've got our strata of interest coming through like that. And well, if this were a level surface, it would be really easy to tell um, what the dip was, and this may look misleading because of this sort of dip in the surface we have here. Uh, 
maybe not the best idea to use dip in uh, two different senses in this video, but because of this uh, um, this sort of pit we have here in the surface. Um, but really, it's not that difficult. All you do is you say, well, if there were a surface here, what would that look like? Well, you simply just draw a dashed line across and say, okay, if there were a surface here, it would connect to the two, uh, the two lines like that, which would give us a uniform um, polygonal strata at least on this two-dimensional surface. Um, and then drawing the angle of dip is really simple. You just say, well, this is the angle it makes with the surface. That is alpha, our angle of dip. And then, don't be misled here. Um, this, this angle right here, it cannot be your angle of dip. Um, your angle of dip will always be an acute angle. Um, so since this one is obtuse, we immediately rule it out. However, of course, um, if you know the relationship between parallel lines, then if we were just to extend this out, then the supplementary angle in here is equal or congruent to this angle. So this is also our angle of dip. Two different places you can find the angle of dip on that diagram. And of course, since this is a two-dimensional cross-sectional diagram, um, you will most likely not be given any sort of direction. Um, you may be just given like north and south or east and west. Um, but to try to pinpoint the exact uh, direction of these would be quite difficult. But since it's generally dipping towards the north, we could say uh, 30 degrees to the north or something to that effect. And that's, for now, the trickiest dip should get. Um, so then there's our second component, component, strike. And strike is uh, really much simpler, but I like to cover dip first because there is there is a benefit to understanding dip uh, before you jump into strike. So what strike, um, really all it is, is it's a cardinal direction. And that's, it sounds deceptively simple, but that's really all it is. Um, so if we take a look at another just simple block diagram here with our little triangular prism. You'll recall that that's our angle of dip and that's our direction of dip. Well the strike is always um, it's a cardinal direction that is always perpendicular to our angle of dip. right? So it's going to be running along this line. So when you look at it, you'll see, you, you can immediately say, if our dip is right here, since it makes contact with the surface, okay, th then the strike is going to be on the lines that um, aren't running with this angle. Uh, that's kind of a bad way of putting it. But you'll see that this line forms that angle, and this line on the other side, since it's three-dimensional, should be a mirror image if we were to kind of draw sort of something like that, then you'd have this angle here again. So you'd say, okay, the lines that are completely uninvolved in forming this angle are these two, and therefore these must be the direction of strike. And once again, let's just put some directions in here because uh, strike is a cardinal direction. And the first thing that you may notice is, well, if we know that it's running along this line, then how do we determine if it's going to the south or to the west here? And that's that's a perfectly valid question, because really, it could be either. Um, however, 
there's a there's a rule that exists called the right hand rule. Uh, sorry to all left-handed people, but the right hand rule basically states that if you were to place your right hand facing in the direction of the dip, so it's kind of hard for me to do since it's facing the other way, but if I were to just twist my hand like that, then your right thumb should point in the direction of the strike. So in this case, just by holding it up facing the other way, my right thumb points south. So if I were to flip it the other way and to twist it that way, I know that my right thumb would be pointing to the west. So um, with that we can say that the strike is simply to the west. Now if you want to get fancy with it, you can say uh, the strike is 10 degrees west of south, or something like that. But that's the most complex strike we'll ever get. Um, it's basically just uh, knowing a direction, and it's always perpendicular to the direction of dip, which can be found simply by locating the angle of dip, and then looking, and then just following the direction of the lines that form that angle. And that's all there really is to strike. Um, in topographic profiles, which is a topic for another video, um, strike is used to form strike lines, which are then used to uh, form uh, different features on the map and are useful in what are called three-point problems. Um, but those are all topics for complete for totally on totally different levels. This was just a basic introduction to strike and dip. So hopefully it was informative, otherwise good review. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.